Aziz Park Münevver Mutahhar Ruh Şeriflerine, Salavat-ı Şerife getirilenlere, ahir ve akıbetlere hayrola. Âl-i Ezvâc-ı Tahirat-ı Evladi Resulü Eshâb-ı Güzün Efendilerimizin, Seyri Enbiya Azam ve Resulü Kiram Hazirat-ı Ervah Şeriflerine, Pirimiz Bilal-i Habaşi Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin, Mihmandar Resulü Kibriya, Eyyub Sultan Halid bin Zedebe Eyyub el Ansari Radiyallahu Anh, Şah Murşidan, Şah Hacı Muhammed Bahati Nakşibani el Buhari, Mevlana Cülal Dine Rummi Mevlana Ziyadettin Halid Bağdadi, Sahibu Zaman Kıbletül İslam, Şeyh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adil Hakani, Sahibu Seyf, Şeyh Abdul Kerim ve Kıbrıs Yerabani Kaddas Allahu Asarruhum Hazretin Ervahi için, Hadim el Harameyn el Şerifayn Yavuz Sultan Selim Han, Ebil Fatih el Mağazi Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han, ve Serdar-ı Hakan, Sultan Abdülhamid Han, Cennet Mekan, Ferdavsi Aşiyan, Hazretin ve Ervahına ve Avni Enayetine, Ağla Husus bu caminin bayinesi ve bugüne kadar içerisine gelmiş, geçmiş İmam Muazzin, Kayyim, Cemaatin ve Kafehli İman Ervahi için Allah rızası için El Fatiha. Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نحمد الله تعالى ونصفر وشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهر أن سيدنا محمد عبده وحبيبه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وزواجه وسير تابي خلف الراشد المهدي من بعده زي ما تعالى تحقيق عزم منه على أميد خلف الرسول على تحقيق أمر المؤمنين حضرة أبو بكر ومر عثمان وعلي ولا بقى سبب تابي نبيت الله تعالى بهم أجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون يتقوا الله تعالى وتئن الله حمل الذين تقوا الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم He created the heavens without pillars that you see and cast into the earth firmly set mountains so that it shakes not with you on it and he has spread it all kinds of creatures and we send down water from the sky and we cause plants of every goodly kind to grow therein this is the creation of Allah so can you show me that which any other than him have created. No, but the wrongdoers are clearly astray. Truly we give Luqman wisdom, saying, be grateful to Allah. And whoever is grateful is grateful for the benefit of his own self. But if anyone is ungrateful, truly Allah is free of all wants worthy of all praise and mention ya muhammad والسلام, when luqman said to his son while advising him oh my son do not associate anything with allah indeed shirk is zulmun azim a terrible 
injustice. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad who said, The people who will be the nearest to me on the Day of Judgment will be those who make the most salawats upon me. And Imam al-Nawawi, rahimallahu an, saying, nearest to me means those who are the most entitled to my shafaat. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabi al-Ummi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his noble family and upon his blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman al Ghazi, and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the Hajjagan of the highest Naqshbandi way, the inheritors of the Holy Prophet. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Padishahs who built and established and maintain the empire of Islam. May Allah let that empire to rise again. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. Ya al Mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you and to me on this holy day of Juma. Welcome to you on this first Juma of the holy month of Zul Qaeda. Welcome to you as we are approaching the days of Hajj the days of Qurban. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to live our days and nights in the way of our father Ibrahim Halilullah and our prophet Muhammad Habibullah wasalam, to understand and live in the way of those who sacrificed for Allah's sake. O oh, believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. فَاسْكُرُونِ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُولِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me, I will remember you. And be grateful to me. And do not deny me. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Our Grand Shaykh, Sultan al-Awliya, Shaykh Mawlana Muhammad Nazim, Adil Al-Hakani Katasasir is saying, after reading this ayat, Shukrullah suits us. Give thanks. Janabul Haq says, give shukur to me. Give shukur. Don't forget to say, shukur lillah. Be happy. Feel happiness. Be honorable. You have been created human beings. O oh Lord, your wish is our command. O oh our Lord who created us, say hamd, praise to Allah. Say shukur to Allah. And the words of Sultan al-Awliya, they speak the truth. O believers, one of the greatest gifts for a believer is to sit down and to thank his Lord. The Shaykh of Hazrat Yujunayr al-Baghdadi, Hazrat Isari Qadazasir said, Thankfulness for a blessing is a blessing itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Mawla and we are his servants. The honor, the izzat of the servant, it comes from being grateful to his master. Because the servant understands that everything he has come, comes from his master. And without his master, he is nothing. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, O mankind, you are the fuqara, the poor ones in need of Allah. Whereas Allah is ghani, rich beyond need, the praiseworthy. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And one of the most beautiful du'as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran is the du'a of Musa Kalimullah. That after he had to leave Egypt, he was in Madian by himself. And he saw the two women who couldn't give water to their sheep, so he helped them. He did not know that they were the daughters of Hazrat Shu'aib He just saw that they needed help, and so he helped them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in Surah Al-Qasas, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, saying, So Musa watered their flock for them. Then he went back to the shade and said, My Lord, truly I am for whatever good you would send down to me, a fakir. Truly I am, for whatever good you would send down to me, 
in need. So think on that scene. The same Musa salam, was living in the palace. He is now sitting in the shade in a strange land. But he is calling out to Allah in that station of being fakir. And with that dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to meet Shu'aib alayhi salam and continue on his path. Allah loves the quality of thankfulness from the servant. Hazrat Ali karamullah wajh said, Blessings arrive with thankfulness to Allah. And thankfulness is connected with more blessings. And the two are tied together. More blessings from Allah will never stop unless the servant stops being thankful. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees his servant being thankful, being grateful, he increases him. This is his promise. In Surah Al-Ibrahim, when he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and remember when your Lord declared, if you are grateful, I will surely increase you. But if you are ungrateful, my punishment is severe. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And the word for ungrateful here is kafartum, showing us again that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tying ungratefulness to kufr. Just as shukur is a crown on the head of a servant, ingratitude, not being grateful is the ugliest thing that a servant can be dressed with because the root of it is kufr. And nothing makes a servant fall out of the pleasure of Allah faster than being ungrateful. Hazrat Hassan al-Basri is saying, It has reached me that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses a people and gives them some good, He asks them to be grateful. If they are grateful, He is all able to give them more. But if they are ungrateful, Allah is all able to turn his blessings into a punishment. So the same servant who spent his life wearing the jubba of thankfulness when he changes it to wear the clothes of ingratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change all of those blessings to curse and punishment. Punishment is the end of the road for the ungrateful. Our Shaykh Sahib al Sahib, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi Rabbani Qadr al was warning us about this more than 12 years ago, saying, Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim. Allah is saying to us, if you are a believer, if you believe, and you will be a thankful servant, why Allah has to punish you? Are you comfortable with that? When you hear that ayat, are you comfortable to say, Alhamdulillah, I have no problem with you, Ya Rabbi. Shukur, Ya Rabbi. Are you sincerely saying that? If you are not saying it, then you must be on the other side. Rush quickly to turn to this side. Move fast. Leave everything to turn to this side. Otherwise, when the rope is cut, you are going to stand on the wrong side. And when you are staying on the wrong side, then you are going to stay with the wrong ones. You are not going to be with the Ahlil Haq, you can call yourself now Hakani, but you are not going to be Hakani then. You are not defending the truth in reality in your own self. So days are passing, weeks are passing, years are passing. No matter what happens, the world and everything in it is running to its end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man in Ahsani Taqwim, the most perfect one, the most perfect creature, and He is saying to us that He has created everything for the service of man. And he has created man for his service. Check yourself. Look at it. Look at yourself and what you are busy with. You will understand then if you are in the service of Allah or if you are in the service of shaitan. If you are not in the service of Allah, then you are in the service of shaitan. And the words of Sahib al-Sahib, they speak the truth. Again, showing that becoming ungrateful leads to kufur. 
And being in a state of kufr takes you out of the category of servant of Allah and puts you in the category of slave to shaitan. And may Allah protect us from that. Amin, inshallah. Once thankfulness goes, everything goes with it. Once we lose our thankfulness, our hearts become dead and our du'as stop being answered. The people of Basra came to Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam Sir and said, Allah says in his book, call on me, I will answer your prayers. But we have been calling on him for a long time and he does not answer our prayers. And Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam Sir said to them, O oh, people of Basra, your hearts have died concerning ten things. First, you know Allah, but you do not give him his rights. Second, you have read Allah's book, but you do not act according to it. Third, you claim to love Rasulullah yet you abandon his sunnah. Fourth, you claim to be the enemies of shaitan, but you follow him. Fifth, you say you love paradise, yet you do not work for it. Sixth, you say you fear the fire, yet you put yourselves closer to it by sinning. Seventh, you say death is true, but you do not prepare for it. Eighth, you busy yourselves with the faults of others and ignore your own. Ninth, you consume the favors of your Lord, but are not grateful for them. And tenth, you bury your dead, but take no lesson from them. The believers must sit and think. Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam was saying this more than 1,000 years ago to the people of Basra in the time that they were surrounded by saints and tabi tabi'in and tabi'in and they were being ruled by the Khalifa of Allah. What then will we say about us today? What about the people of Ahir Zaman whose du'as are not being answered? What about the Muslims who are under the oppression and zulm of the kafirs and each other? What about the Muslims who don't have the power to stand up to their enemies? What about the Muslims whose own leaders and governments kill them, steal from them and cheat them? What about Muslims whose scholars are wolves in sheep's clothing, speaking according to who pays them? What about Muslims who are busy with copying the unbelievers and running away from the Sunnah? What about Muslims who mock their own religion, who insult the Sahabis, who reject and curse the Allah? What about Muslims who have no Khalifa, who are left without a Sultan? and who don't even care anymore. If Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam called the hearts of the people of Basra dead, then the condition today is not just dead, but we are rotting. Holy Prophet told us about what would happen in this time. When he said, you people should continue to do emri bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar, and joining people towards righteous deeds and forbidding them from wrongdoing. Otherwise, Allah will place in authority over you the worst of people amongst you. Then, the most pious, the best, the most religious amongst you will do dua, but the duas will not be answered. Who has the power to enjoin good and forbid evil? the rulers, the governments. Sahib al-Sahib is saying, Amri bil ma'roof wa nahiyan il munkar. That's finished too, completely. That the Holy Prophet is saying, when that finishes, everything is finished. In the nations, Amri bil ma'roof must first come from the top leaders. The leaders must give orders to the people to direct them to the right roads and to stop them from the wrongdoings. Who were the leaders who were doing that? The shadow of Allah on the earth, the Sultan, the Khalifa. For Amri bil ma'roof and Nahiyan al munkar to be there, there must be shariat. And the upholder of the shariat 
is the Khalifa, the Sultan. Without him, everything becomes chaos and fitna. This is why Holy Prophet ﷺ said, one day under a just Imam is better than 60 years of worship. One day under an Imam who has justice is better than 60 years of worship. Have we shown shukr for the just rulers that we had? Did we show shukr to those padishahs that they stood for haq and that with their blood, their bodies, their minds, their spirits, their families, they defended Islam and brought glory to Islam? Or did this ummat remove them and continue to remove them? They were the ones through whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His blessings. And Allah orders gratitude to those through whom He sends His blessings. Holy Prophet is saying, whoever is treated well, let him repay them. If he cannot find repayment, let him praise them, for that is thanking them. If he hides it, he has been ungrateful to them. Whoever decorates himself with what he has not been given, it is as if he wears a garment of lies. And the Prophet of Allah speak the truth. Yes, the Ottoman Sultans, the Ghazi Sultans, who not only did this Ummat stop repaying them, and stop praising them, and stop thanking them, we had been cursing at them non-stop for over 100 years. And they started looking up to and loving our enemies. Who is saying this? Sultan al is saying this. Saying, the Sultan of the Ottomans will come, whether they like it or not. Grass is different. A grand old sycamore tree is different. The Ottoman Sultan must come for sure. The Ottomans ruled and watched Quds for 500 years. There are pictures of it in the history books. You may look into it. The British entered on horseback. The general and the people of that area clapped for them. They applauded the British because the Ottomans left and the British came. Take these troubles now. Take them now. It turned into a knot that cannot be untied. Take it now. There are history books in front of me which show that they were clapping when the British were entering and the Ottomans left. <coughs> Muslims continue to sleep, drunk and in gaflet. But we must wake up. We have dishonored ourselves when we left the Ottomans. We became ungrateful to Allah, we became ungrateful to the Prophet. When we left the Ottomans, we left the Sunnah of the Messenger والسلام, when we left the Ottomans. The ones who left the Ottomans, they became the slaves of Shaitan. And yes, without the Khalifa, our duas are not answered. Without the Khalifa, we don't even have Islam. Islam is not ruling. Shaykh Maulana is saying with Haybet and Jalal, the people are so ignorant like this now. Without the Khalifa, Friday prayer is not valid. Eid is not valid. Without the Khalifa, no fatwa can be carried out. Friday khutbah is given under his name. Without mentioning the Khalifa's name, there cannot be a khutbah. Who do they mention now? We were glorious and honorable. Today in the streets, women walking around naked, young men wandering aimlessly everywhere has become upside down. No chastity is left. No religion or faith is left. Oh, young children being raised now, they are cheating you too. But now they are asking, who are we? We are Ottomans. They have started to say we are Ottomans because Ottomans have honor.
For 700 years, disbelievers feared them. That is why the enemies removed the Ottomans. They even kicked out of the country babies who were still breastfeeding. What kind of balance is this? What kind of justice? They made every haram to be halal. Did any scholar stand up to say, we are in Darul Khilafah? Where is the Halifa? Without Halifa, no Islamic country can recite the Friday khutbah. Where is the Sultan? Where is our Sultan? People are fighting each other. Everywhere is upside down. This is the reality of the Muslims of the Ahir of Ahir Zaman. That blessing is removed. And we are under a heavy curse. And Shia Fendi is saying, so the Khalifa moved from the chair. And the Khalifa is now not ruling. So no more blessing is coming because no more blessing is coming now. All wrong things are opening and coming to the surface. Before the Khalifa was there, more blessings was reigning. And in the east, west and everywhere, there was proper ruling. As I said again, you don't have to become an awliyaullah to understand. The one biggest mistake that the Muslim today have is that they don't know the history. First, you have to check the history. Open the pages back a little bit, turn it back, look where the trouble started, and since then, if the trouble stopped, when did it start? Right after Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, the trouble started everywhere in the world. Non-stop, 24 hours a day. Holy Prophet is saying the blood is going to move like a river on earth. And Sahib al Saif speak the truth. All around us now, rivers of blood. What can we do? Where is safety? Safety is in shukr. Safety is in tawbah. Safety is in coming to these doors, standing at these doors, hanging on to these doors and never letting go. We are giving shukr to Allah for the ni'mat of Islam and the sharaf of Iman and we are thanking Him for those ones who are the manifestation, the proof of the power of Islam, our Ottoman ajdad. And we are making tawbah for whatever part we had in the removal of the Hilafat and the Sultanate, and we are begging and asking not to be counted from those who have Zulm or any part of Zulm, and to not let our hearts to have any tolerance for Zalims, and to not be counted as Zalims. Alhamdulillah, that we have a Shaykh, an Osmanli Naqshbandi Shaykh, to teach us this way. And that Shaykh, that Sahib al Sahib is teaching us to wake up our identity as Ottomans, to teach it to our children, and to live according to it. Shaykh Fendi is saying, Allah is saying to us, race in the way of Allah, race. Race is in doing good things, in doing good things, good deeds, racing with each other. That's acceptable and knowing where your energy is finishing if you are running for islam and you know that you are racing with that one together and you know that your energy is finishing you must be able to transfer the power from you to that one let that one carry it saying this is the end of my time you must carry it then you will become beloved to allah and his prophet this is what we have seen through the history from Adam alayhi salam until Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. After Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, we have seen this very openly all the time. Through the history of the Seljuk Empire and the Ottomans. We are Osmanli. We are Pekshanlis. We are Ottomans and we are very honored. Allah has honored us with that. So many dropped it today. So many are attacking the Ottomans also. They can attack in any way, it doesn't matter. Allah keeps them high and they are high and we are very honored holding them high and we are going to hold them high. We are not good. We are not good for anything. 
We know that. What they did, it is impossible for us to do. But at least we say, Ya Rabbi, we love them. We love what they did because they did it for your sake and for your Prophet's sake. If we hold that high, Allah will keep us high. If we drop it, we are dropping ourselves down. Through history, we are seeing from individuals to groups of people to nations that when they kept the orders of Allah, Allah kept them high. As soon as they dropped it down, He took it away from them and He gave it to another nation. We must be the nominees to say, we are the nominees, Ya Rabbi, trying to hold this very high. We are knowing our power that we have. We are knowing our power that we have no power. We are very weak ones, very weak servants. We are asking support from you. If support is coming from you to us, then we are the most strong ones. But don't let us to deviate from the Sirat al Mustaqim. Amen. O oh, mankind, these teachings are a priceless treasure. Be grateful. Don't be ungrateful. Be a servant of Allah. Don't be a slave of shaitan and your nafs. Come to Allah as a person, as a one in need, a fakir, and He will honor you. Don't come with arrogance. He will humiliate you. May endless salat and salams be upon our Master Muhammad والسلام, and upon his Ahlul Bayt and upon his Sahabis. May Allah bless our Shaykh, the one who brought us to guidance. May Allah bless our Grand Shaykh and all of the Mashaykh of his way. May Allah bless our Ottoman grandfathers. May Allah enable us to understand them, to love them more, and to live according to their way. We are ending with Shem Alana's dua saying, May Allah bless our ancestors and our holy grandfathers. May they rest in paradises. Those opposing them, may their graves be hellfire. Tawbah ya Rabbi, Tawbah ya Rabbi. Al-Fatiha. Amin. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد شان كرير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من صالح لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من صالح لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من صالح صبوا إن كنتوا سنر بن الرب المنير صبوا إن كنتوا سنر بن الرب المنير إن دين الله الإسلام